Hi, and welcome to Partex Tech Lightning. In this episode, I will take you on a quick tour of encryption in Azure. So what are we waiting for then? Absolutely nothing. Here we go. We have to start up with some terminology to make sure that we are on the same page of what we talk about when we mention encryption. There are three types of encryption that we're gonna mention and talk about. First of all, it's encryption at rest. Then we have encryption in transit, data in motion. Thirdly, encryption in use. The first one, encryption at rest, is actually all the data that is stored somewhere. It is resting. A file, for example, that you have stored on an Azure storage account. Now that is an example of something using encryption at rest. Encryption in transit is whenever data is exchanged or moving through the networks. This is usually applied somewhere with protocols such as TLS, which I'm sure you've actually heard about. Now the third one, encryption in use. Now this is an interesting one. In order for a computer to perform calculations, for example, process data, it first needs to store it somewhere. So it can store it, for example, in memory. Now for simplicity, imagine it stores your name and date of birth in memory in order to calculate your age and other fun facts about you. Encryption in use means that the data, so your date of birth, for example, is encrypted in memory. So in case somebody takes a dumps, they actually finds the physical machine, they dumps the memory on, on that one, they would just see the encrypted data of the memory. In Azure, this can be done with, for example, confidential compute, where you have either virtual machines using the AMD technology or Intel STX uh, technology there. So it's all possible. Uh, I would say the Intel STX is less common today because you need to integrate your applications with it as well. Now, in order to encrypt or decrypt, you need a key. A public key, which can be sent to everyone in the whole world, is actually used to encrypt the information. Now, in order to de decrypt the information, you need a private key. A private key is actually one of the highest secrets that you need to keep. Anyone with a private key could decrypt the data that was encrypted with your public key, the public key you've sent to everyone. So keep the private key safe. Now in Azure, there are different ways to handle keys. You have platform managed keys, also known as Microsoft managed keys, and some people also refer it to as service managed keys. So the terminology is used interchangeably, but I feel that platform and keys fits the purpose. So I will keep on using that terminology for that one. Now, these are keys that are used in the background to encrypt and decrypt completely transparent to you. You don't have to do anything. For example, if you store a file on a storage account in Azure, without any additional configuration, this file is automatically encrypted using the 256-bit AES standard. You don't set create nor manage any of these keys, and it's actually referred to as server-side encryption. Then we have the second part, we have customer managed keys. Now these are the keys which you as a customer generate and bring. So this means that you decide and set the encryption key yourself. They also can refer this to as bring your own key, BYOK. Now the real benefit here is that you actually don't bring an encryption key written in plain text into Azure, right? Instead, you actually use a hardware security module, ATSM, to bring your key into Azure. Now, the benefit of that is that means that no human has actually seen your key, so they haven't been able to copy it. So no human knows what it is. It is brought directly into Azure securely with no human being able to check it or copy it. So it's a very secure way of working but of course, it has a matching price tag and it can be a little bit expanding depending on what you want to do with it. Now, thirdly, we have platform managed keys. They are actually keys that are controlled in a customer controlled hardware. It's a bit like the first option, except you have a concept called hold your own key. The key used in Azure is actually stored in your own system, such as Active Directory, which is then on premise. Now, this is not a very common setup, but you should at least be aware that it exists. Looking at these keys, uh, you need a way to store them, right? So you bring the keys to Azure, you need to store them somewhere. Well, 
surely you have not written them down in a piece of paper in plain text. So I think you have guessed it all by now where you need to store them. The official recommendation from Microsoft is you need to store them in an Azure Key Vault. Of course, now targeted at the customer managed keys, right? There's one more concept we need to explain. We have the server-side encryption, right? like I mentioned, where, for example, the storage account automatically encrypts the data on the server side, which is great. But we also have something called client-side encryption. Now, this is where the client, you, for example, would first encrypt the file before storing it on the storage account. So you may, for example, uh, for practical purposes, sometimes you may zip a file, you will put a zip password on the file. That means it's encrypted. And then once it's uh, protected with the password, you then upload it to the storage account. And the whole purpose of this process is actually to ensure that the provider of the hosting where you put the destination file is not able to read the file no matter what. So great, we have this under control. Let's now look at some of the most common Azure services and how encryption are used in there. Data at rest um, immediately points us to disk encryption. All managed disks, snapshots, and images are actually encrypted using the storage service encryption, SSE, with a PMK, which is a platform managed key. In technical terms, it can be compared, for example, a little bit maybe like BitLocker to Windows, right? This is such a fundamental encryption that it's actually enabled on all storage accounts, regardless of tier or SKUs that you have enabled. You can also specify and use a CMK, Customer Managed Key, for encrypting and decrypting data in a Blob and Azure Files storage account. These keys are then written and stored in the Azure Key Vault. Also, as I mentioned, let's not forget about the client-side encryption, which can be used as additional security before uploading the files to the storage account. Azure SQL databases, they are encrypted at the data at rest using TDE, the Transparent Data Encryption. Now, this is enabled by default, and it actually means that the encryption of the database is done at page level. Now, pages in a encrypted database are encrypted before they're written to disks. So they're subsequently then decrypted when they are used and read into memory. TDE, we can say it's more of a general approach for all database files on disk at rest. While the other technology called always encrypted, now this is a more granular approach. Always encrypted is actually there to protect SQL data at column level both at rest and in transit. TDE is transparent, it requires no application awareness and is applicable for data at rest. Always encrypted, it does require application awareness and potentially code changes, but then offers that additional security layer that it has. Let's look at encryption for data in transit. Now there's data link layer encryption in Azure for network traffic, which moves between data centers. By default, whenever you communicate between different data centers in, in a region and actually also outside of the region, this communication is encrypted using a technology called MagSec encryption. This is on by default and actually requires no intervention from you. As a reminder, at the data link, it operates at layer two of the OSI model, just after or before the physical layer. Now, recently, Microsoft, they also introduced virtual network encryption. This is encryption of traffic between virtual machines, even if they are in the same virtual network. As this feature was introduced, Quite recently, the support for the virtual machine and SKUs are actually quite limited today. So you have to be very careful. You have to check that the virtual machine and the SKU is supported because communication between unsupported resources will not be encrypted using this method. So like I said, I recommend to review the latest requirement, uh, which is in the link of this video below to see if it's fully supported with your SKU. 
We cannot talk about encryption in transit without mentioning TLS, of course, right? The TLS encryption. This security protocol is an example that, for example, when you interact with a storage account in Azure, you're interacting using HTTPS. At that point, you're actually using TLS. For the old folks, like myself, we may remember SSL and TLS as an updated and more secure version of the SSL protocol. Any application or operating system should actually use TLS version 1.2 today, preferably 1.3 optimistically if it's available. Let's look at a couple of good encryption housekeeping tips and usage pattern. Now, if you do any file sharing using network drives, always make sure you use SMB 3.0 as this is wider support for encryption. It is more secure, it has been available for more than a decade, so there's no excuse to not use SMB 3.0. For remote machine takeover, you have RDP, which can be encrypted with TLS. For Linux boxes, there's always SSH, um, which is a secure protocol, but it's actually not the same as TS TLS encryption. SSH uses automatically generated keys in order to encrypt this session. Site-to-site -site VPNs, they use IPsec for transport encryption and is considered safe even though tra the traffic is traversing the public internet. IPsec encrypts all the data that is transmitted through the connection. There is no possibility for, a, for example, a man in the middle attack to interface and read your data. Now, what about the data in transit encryption using an express route? There is actually no encryption, such as IPsec, unless you use ExpressRoute Direct. In ExpressRoute Direct, you have the MacSec encryption, which we have mentioned, that encrypts all the traffic on the physical link. Now, ExpressRoute Direct, there is actually when you have a dedicated physical link to Microsoft and not using a third-party provider. So I would say it's not a very common configuration and only for very large enterprises with specific requirements. If the traffic is not encrypted using the standard express route, how do we handle that part then? Because we will be sending unencrypted data. Well, it's not exactly right. Express route, it's a private circus, circuit, so it's not actually traversing the public internet. Already there, we can say that it's a bit more secure because it's private. However, encryption always have to be done on the client side as well. Or you can also use a site-to-site -site VPN through the express route to provide extra encryption. But in other words, it comes down to it, express route has no inherent encryption, but it's usually not an issue because it's a private circuit and the encryption is done by the application. That was all for this episode of Potex Tech Lightning. Encryption and security is, of course, of vital importance, but also equally complex. You can go as far as you want, specifically with double encryption. When one key gets compromised, your data is still intact because it has been encrypted twice with two different keys. So that was it for today. Have a safe and secure rest of the week. Take care and see you.